All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? This is Brent Harvey, and this is the uh, empower the weekly empower yourself sustaining actor lecture Q and A. Uh, I don't know series. I'm still trying to figure out what to call it. Like I know the empower yourself sustaining actor part, but what to come after that? I haven't quite figured it out yet. So one day it'll it'll click, and we can adjust it. But hey. It's just what we do, right? I mean, that's what we do as creators. We're constantly pivoting, as they say. Um, so welcome, my fellow uh, creative uh, community, to this week's chat, lecture. I don't like the word lecture because it's like, and I've said this before, it's like you're, I don't know, I think of my father lecturing me or something like that. Um, you know, inspiration chat. It's not a podcast either. So I don't know what it is. Maybe we'll create our own category for it. Who knows? Um, but welcome. And I hope everybody had a creative week. Um, and uh, I don't know. Expanded. Whether you be personally expanded or creatively expanded, whatever it may be. Um, but uh, I hope there was expansion. And I, of course there was. I mean, there could not be. It's like Alan Watts talks about. It's like the, the reason the, um, the universe is expanding is because we keep creating te- uh, more and more powerful telescopes to look deeper and deeper in space. And so the universe is just running away from itself, which uh, I thought was a cool, it's a cool way to look at it. But uh, yeah, so what, you know, I've been trying to think about what I want to talk about this week, because I got like, I literally have a list of things that that have popped up over the years, months, things like that, that have been like, you know, I, I'd love to talk about this. I'd love to talk about that. But one thing that popped up yesterday, I was meeting a couple, a uh, couple guys for a, like happy hour. And we were, we got into it and it's just, it's something that constantly comes up one way or another. And it's a constant theme, um, in my coachings, in my own life, just in my own experience of our industry. Um, and it's something I harp on all the time, but even myself, I don't do that often. I shouldn't say that. I do it often. I don't do as much as I should. But it's creating your own content. And I know people are going, oh, my God, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't want to talk about this, but don't listen, (laughs) you know, but that's what we're going to talk about. But other people might be inspired. But the reason talk about creating own content, you know, as actors, we approach this industry, I don't know, at least I did start now. And it, can, it seems to be a continued theme when I talk to people that the concept, the idea uh, is still like the old Hollywood idea, which is that an actor is supposed to be an actor, a director is a director, right? Like it's all segregated in what everybody does. It used to be that way. Uh, There were very few, like a Charlie Chaplin who did multiple things. There were very few of those people at the time. We're gonna get back to Charlie Chaplin, by the way. The world's changed and our industry has changed. So much has changed and it's not, It's not a bad thing, man. If you if you look at the old studio systems and how they were set up, the studios had all the power Had all the power. If you were talent, like if you if you do your research and look into the history of it, like the actors, especially the actresses, in order for that, like if you look at like Paramount or um, I mean, just any of the any of the old studios like Paramount, I can think of like Paramount and Sony and things like that, where they have all these little bungalows um, 
little cabins, not cabin, but like bun their bungalows, but bungalows, little houses, like one room or open studio houses on the studio lot. Um, that's where they would keep their talent. And, you know, and it sounds cool. It's like, oh, the studio gives me a place to live. Yeah, it's cool. Except for, you know, somebody told me once is like, you know, the walls that they built around the studio isn't to keep people out. It's to keep people in back in the day. And like the women in, in order for them to go out just to even get some, or actors too, the male and female actors, but the female actors more so than the male actors, but still the males were the same, but in order for them just to go out and get dinner, they would have to go to hair, makeup, wardrobe, and the studio picked everything that they wore and their image and everything else because they owned them. They literally owned them on contract. And let's say that that you uh, that you were an actor with MGM and you knew an, a director or a writer over at Paramount that had a project that you were perfect for. Unless the studio would loan you out to the other studio, you couldn't do a pro. You'd only do projects for that studio. And they, a lot of times, unless you were a movie star, a lot of times they would put you in multiple, like burn you out doing B-level, C-level movies a lot of times, just cranking out movies. Um, and it was like almost, it was a salary thing. So it's, it's like those of you that have worked corporate jobs or, you know, anything like a salary job. You know, salary jobs, you know, it sounds cool, you know, on, on paper or in, in ideology, it sounds cool to have a corporate job until that means that no matter how many hours you work, you get paid the same. So like, it's like $100,000 is great if you're working 30 hours a week or 40 hours a week at most. But if you're working 60 hours a week, you're not making $100,000 a year anymore. So it's the same thing. So, you know, there was a lot. I mean, they literally owned, contractually owned actors and directors and writers. And they told them, this is what you're working on. And, and even though they like they had some what of a job security and things like that, but like they were fully controlled. I mean, the music industry was the same way. And then you look at what happened. Um, I don't know. Has it been 15, 20 years ago now with the music industry shift? And I had a buddy who was part of the music industry. And he told me a few years back, he's like, you realize your industry is going through what we went through like 10 years ago. And it's like, and then all the musicians went from having to, you know, do everything. And, you know, the, the, the record labels had all the power in that you needed them in order to, you know, they, you need a record deal in order to get distribution and everything else. And then technology came along where they could, do it themselves very cheaply they didn't need to pay for sound recording studios and then the power shifted and it's now now all these artists then became producers and became label owners themselves and the power shifted towards like now we have the power and then now the record labels have the smaller portion of you know they have less leverage it created freedom our industry has been going through this for quite a few years now and still I see, you know, actors are going, well, I'm just an actor. It's like, and I just, you know, and I get that. I get that. But it's like, I see majority of actors want to, they all, they're all following the same path. And the path is I'm going to start. I can't even remember the hierarchy of how this works because it's how little I, pay attention to it but it's like i'm going to do background work and then i'm going to do you know uh, uh, uh feature i think it was a featured extra and then i'm going to do you know five and under and then i'm going to do a co-star and a guest star and then a reoccurring and then the series regular and then i'm and then i'm going to transition into movies from television it's like that's a route absolutely i mean i still submit to auditions and i still you know do that stuff but you literally have the masses following like the same formula going to like you have a group of, of, of actors like how many times you go to an audition and you go in and everybody looks like you right and you're competing with all these clones of you 
and it's it's the equivalent of of saying um you teach a man to fish he's for a day or uh, what is it you feed you feed a man fish he's for a day you teach a man to fish he eats the rest of his life when we're in the position of looking to other people for opportunities um they're our source of substance that they, they, we eat when they give us the food to eat and if they're like well you don't deserve to eat or we don't have enough food for everyone so we're going to give it to this person and i i say that in the context of giving jobs booking work right now you're at the mercy of them they have all the power i mean we've all been there where it's like uh you know we're 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 bending over backwards we're breaking our morals we're doing things we wouldn't normally do to get somebody to like us because we're so desperate for work we're so desperate for a job we we just want to get our foot in the door but that's what happens when someone else has the power over you in the sense of they get to determine whether you work or not. But when you are able to create your own content, create your own opportunities, the power shifts very quickly. Because now it's like, okay, you don't want to, you don't want to book me or you don't think I'm right for this role. Like, like there's so many gatekeepers in between you and where you want to go. There's so many gatekeepers with so many opinions and, and egos and, um, uh, agendas. And I'm not saying these people are bad, but they're human beings. And it's like, what do you, what do you do if you go into an audition for a role and you look or resemble the casting director's ex boyfriend or girlfriend who had a really bad ending to their relationship? You can't control that. And so if they're like, I don't like them because you remind them, right? Like you can't, there's nothing you can do about it. Or, you know, case of point, like, like what happened to me was that like literally the role was written with me in mind, or it was, I should say, it was um, molded after me. Um, I was the inspiration for the character. And, uh, and the producer ended up giving the role to a friend of his who had no acting experience. And it's just like, I can't compete with their relationship. So, but what I can do is I can control what I create. And, and so when we create our own opportunities, we take our power back. I say it all the time. It's like you, you, you buy a Tesla and then hand the keys to somebody else and you get in the back seat. Like we've all rented rental cars before. Do we take care of that rental car as much as we do our own? No. And with all these gatekeepers that have, you know, the ability to say yes or no about mo like there's the odds are so stacked against you right and i'm not saying don't audition and don't but i'm saying to 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 think that this is the only way and this is the conversation i was having yesterday they're like this is how it is and this is what somebody told me and that's the way it is it's like dude like if that person's telling everybody else that then everybody else is following that same path and now you're competing with all these people yeah, you're lost in the noise of it all. But if you create your own, there's no competition because there's only one of you, right? And so <laughs> you're you're gonna win. You're gonna win. And now it may not it may not be like oh it turns into a series or it turns but it's like think of this: if you were a musician and you were looking for a record deal. Or, you know, building an audience even just to just to get people to know who you were. Would. How ridiculous would it be if you're just like, I'm just going to sit in my apartment, watch TV until somebody calls me up and, and gives me a record deal or ask me to come play at the Staples Center or something like that. You'd be sitting in your apartment the rest of your life. What do musicians do? They go to coffee houses. They record, you know, uh, cover songs and put, post them to YouTube. We do all, we, they do all these things to let people know their style of music. Like there's millions of people in the world that play guitar, right? 
but people play guitar differently and they, you know, or they cover a song differently than, than the original artist or other artists. And through that, you go, oh, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not a big, um, was it American Idol or anything like that? But I know there's this one kid who did a cover song of some girl's song. I forget what it was. It was uh, Dancing by Myself or something like that. And it like he didn't write the song. He just you he just he approached the song differently. And I think I don't know if he won the competition. Either way, it led him to a full record deal, right? But he had to put himself out there. And if the American Idol thing didn't work out, I'm I'm sure he 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 was you know somehow Justin Bieber. Whether you like him or not, the kid used what he did. Is he he he's not the most talented person or musician or anything in the world. But what he did do is he put himself out there consistently. He put himself on YouTube and then what Usher saw him. Was it Usher? I think it was Usher. It was Usher saw him and then was like, this kid's got something. And like, he like took him under his wing and thing like that. But Usher wouldn't have known who he was if he, if, if Justin Bieber was just sitting in his basement going, well, you know, when somebody calls me up, it's called show business. You have to show people what you can do, right? And I say this all the time. If you have the cure for cancer, but nobody knows about it, you're not helping anybody. Like if you had the cure for cancer, why wouldn't you go out and tell it and, and like create videos and everything explaining about the cure and what you have and everything else? Somebody out there is, is, has a problem that you are the solution to, but they don't know you exist because you're not putting yourself out there. You're not putting your calling card out there. You're not utilizing technology to let people know what you can do and go, oh shit, that's, that's, that's who I need. There they are. (laughs) And so you ever see a role, somebody playing a role that you're like, they don't fit that role. Right. But, but that's, that's me, man. That's me a hundred percent. Well, why didn't you get the role? Why didn't you get the offer? Why didn't you get the audition? Because I guarantee you, unless it's like a celebrity or, you know, somebody like that, that filled the role, I guarantee you, like, they, that's the best they could find. Because you're, you don't have your shit out there posting it to, you know, let people know that you're there. It's your calling card. It's like, we, it's, you know, like a website or anything else. Like we create all that to let people know we exist and whether you like it or not, like advertisement, and I say that not in the sense of bill necessarily billboards and mag, but advertisement in the sense of advertising who you are, which is so easy these days through uh, with technology, with with social media, and in you know, and all the platforms and things like that to just put yourself out there. Um, and even with a Facebook, you could target. You could target people in Los Angeles and in London and New York and creatives and between the age of this and this and anybody who's a casting director, you know, if they've logged in into their account there, they're a casting director, anything like that. And it will put it in front of them if you just pay a little bit of money. So there's nothing but potential out there, but you got to, you got to take charge. You got to get in the driver's seat, man. Like the opportunities out there and it is not just inexpensive but it is so accessible now and i see on social media and just everything i see people with whether it's tiktok or whatever i just see so many people because i talking to this uh fellow actor of mine last night it was they were like yeah well you know i know people who have 150,000 followers and da 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 and they're not getting called in and everything else i'm like yeah but what i see if that's true what i see is i see so many people doing just copying everybody else and so they're just falling into even though they might have 150,000 people following them they have 100 people 50,000 people following them that are following other people who are all doing the same thing because they're all just meshing together it's this other noise because so people, it just seems like in society, but, you know, in art and everything else, there's very, I mean, I'm sure it's always been this way, but there's so many, there's so few people who are willing to um, do something original. 
And I get it. Like I get it from the place of wanting, like you see this, this thing succeeding. And so you go, well, if I do that, I'll succeed and I'll get the ball rolling, things like that. But the people who really make change are the splashes in the world. They're the people who, um, they, they, they're out, they step outside. They come from a whole different angle. They, they approach it differently. Isn't it, isn't it interesting that the, you know, every, pretty much every year, the Oscar goes to an independent film or, you know, an actor, actor, you know, actors that were in independent films and did performances. It's never, it's never the Marvel movies. It's never the big budget, you know, uh, action movies and things like that, that, that when it's always these little things but what's interesting is is that everybody's like oh yeah these independent films are so good but then the next year like everybody studios and things continue to fund these bigger projects but won't you know don't tend to funnel off and support these independent films but yet the independent films that really like go for it are the ones that rattle the cages and then create careers. I say it all the time with the like with creating your own content. And I, I just want to clarify when I say create your own content, I'm not talking about you have to be a prolific writer and director and everything else and create this groundbreaking series or feature film or whatever it is. I'm saying it's it could be something as simple as turning on your camera every day and uh, coming up with like one thing you could do is you could take um, uh, like jars or, you know, cups or whatever. And, and you, you write on, um, uh, take a piece of paper and write on a piece of paper, a bunch of things, people, places, and things, make a list of people, make a list of places, make a thing, a list of things. And, you know, just write a list and then cut those into individual pieces, fold them up and put, put, you know, all the people, places, things in three different jars, mix them up. And then you pull one out of each and you pull a people, place, thing. And then you look at it and you go, okay, uh, I don't know, Christopher Walken, um, grocery store, um, um, uh, almonds. And you just put the camera up and then you ad lib or you could write a little scene about Christopher Walken at the grocery store getting almonds and show people what you can do. Or I don't know, if you're a singer, if you're a musician, if you you know can do a weird thing, if you're double jointed or something like that, like implement that into a skit somehow and, sh and showcase what your abilities are, right? If you're a horseback rider, if you ride dirt bikes, if you skydive, like there's so many things. One thing, you know, uh, I just watched this interview with Tom Cruise because Top Gun 2 just came out. And he, I think it was the interview where he was at Khan and um, he talked about, you know, he just, he's constantly learning new things. And what he's done in his, throughout his career is every time somebody, he gets a script, he, and he, that he likes and he agrees to do it, he goes back to the studio or he goes back and says, I'll do this script, but I like case in point, I just, I learned how to, I think it was um, a Tropic Thunder. He was, he'd been taking hip hop less dance lessons. So he's like, I want, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want my character to dance. Or if he's been, you know, racing cars or flying airplanes or learning, you know, Spanish or something like that. He'll, whatever new skill he's been practicing and learning, he finds a way to, to inject it into the, the script so he can do that new skill in uh, in the story right so what are your skill sets what what do you do what have you learned even when you were a kid like there's one thing i learned off of uh i don't have any quarters near me but i learned off happy days the tv show i don't even remember but there's an episode i remember when i was a kid there's an episode where where one of the characters put a stack of quarters on their elbow and could like catch them right so as a kid, I started stacking these quarters and I actually, I can do that. I can put, put a stack of quarters and I can catch them. Um, 
So like that's something I could implement into a skit or a character or something like that. But I, when I say create your own content, it's something as simple as turn on that camera or it's something as big as creating a web series or a feature film or, or anything like that. But the point is, is that in doing that, you take control of your career. You take control of your, your creative outlet. I mean, I have, I hear this from actors all the time. Like I've been, I've been there too, which is like, oh, my dream role would be to play this. I'm like, why don't you just write that role and then play it? Like, why are you waiting for all the stars to align and, and the right script and the right writer and the right opportunity? Like, there's so many factors that have to fall into place for you to play that, go, climbing through that ladder, if you will, corporate ladder. And that's what it feels like to me. It feels like a corporate ladder uh, pounding the pavement that way. Or you can just bypass all that and do it yourself. Now, keep in mind, like this uh, actor I was talking to last night was like, well, Brent, I don't have $3,000 or three or no, it was, I don't have $3 million to, because we're, it started out, we we're talking about commercials. And I was like, uh, well, if you don't like the commercials you're going out for, like, just start shooting your own commercials just for fun, you know, pick up a product and be like, the Roku, you know, the Roku universal uh, remote, it'll change your life and it'll change channels. Like, I don't know, like coming up with something like that, just to practice, not one, practice your craft, but two, like pra and practice your craft, practice your imagination. But, you know, show, you know, you, you get, you start coming up with fun stuff. And well, I don't have $3 million to shoot my own commercial. I'm like, whoa, you're like, even if you had $3 million, I would tell you go shoot your own commercial. I'd say use the $3 million to shoot a bunch of stuff. Like you don't need $3 million to shoot a commercial. Like you just need your phone and an idea and good audio if you can. Like audio is very important. But, you know, I 20 bucks, there's there's lavalier mics that, you know, they have wireless ones now. But even wired one, you plug in and clip here and it gives you good audio on your phone. But um, uh, what was I saying? creating your own content. And, oh, we have this tendency of, of like, we're, we're comparing ourselves to, like you can't compete with a hundred million dollar film unless you're a studio with a hundred million dollars resources and everything to create a hundred million dollar film. And, and why would you? Like the, the idea is not to compete with these. The idea is to get, is to get your voice out there, to get yourself out there. To, to show the world, to show the industry what you can do, right? And case in point, Issa Rae, I, I, I love this example because, you know, I, when I was like, I'm going to do a web series and I started studying other web series. Issa Rae did a web series and I always screw this up, but I think it's called Diary of a little black girl. I always screw up because it's like close to Diary of a Mad Black Woman or something like that. But look it up. Anyways, she did this web series and she did two, she did two seasons of it. And if I remember correctly, like she shot the first one for a couple thousand dollars and then like she, there was a following behind it. And so she raised money to make a second season. And, you know, but if you look at it and I don't, I don't mean any disrespect at all, but it, it has a point, but if you look at it, the production is not that good. Okay. The, the, you know, the actors, most of the actors she used were friends. They weren't professional actors. Uh, the locations that she was limited to were these little spaces and she did the best she could. The editing wasn't the best. The sound wasn't the best. It, it wasn't like a high-end production because she was limited on resources and money and all this other stuff, but she did it. And, but even through all the lower end production value of it, what you can hear is her voice. She had a very clear perspective and, and idea. And, and, and she had what she had to say about her experience of the world, about dating, about working, about friends, like all this other stuff. And so through that, somebody at HBO sees it and goes, okay, I see what she, I, I can hear. She's got an original, she's got an original voice. She's got a perspective we haven't heard before. 
the production may not be that good, but we have the we have the resources to level up the production. What we don't have is that voice. And so then, you know, they call her in and they developed it into insecure. And for overnight, she went from somebody, I don't know if she even had an acting credit. She might have had one or two, but I don't think she did, if I remember correctly. But she didn't have, an, uh, if anything, she had a couple, but she went from being in the back of the line, nobody knew who she was, to the front of the line. Her, she's the star and showrunner of her own show saying what she wants to say and how she wants to say it, working with the people she wants to work with. And, um, and she is now one of the most influential actors, writers, directors, producers, black woman in Hollywood. In a short, like, in a short period of time, she just jumped the line. Another one is uh, Frankie... Uh, I can't remember her name, uh, Frankie Song, but she did this. It's a brill. It's a really brilliant short film. Um, she did this really brilliant short film about um, she had just had a kid, and um, she she it, this is the clever idea. This is it was just a clever idea. She just she she just had a newborn, and she called up an ex boyfriend and asked him to come over to sleep with her, and he comes over. And he, you know, and she's like, hey, I don't know if everything down there still is feels the same or whatever. So we're going to have sex just to find out if if how, you know, let me know, you know, if, if, if I'm ruined, basically, because of having the kid. And so the whole the whole short film is about them having this conversation and leading to the sex and everything and going. So does it feel the same or different? And it's very clever. And that led to um, her own again her starring in her own series called I, I think I think it was called Smilf I think she did two or three seasons of that um another one was this woman who uh, I'm blanking on her name right now too um because I haven't talked about this stuff in a while but uh she did um she just start she started doing skits and things like that and put skits out there but that led to uh my crazy ex-boyfriend which was a like a musical uh, a weird hybrid of a musical uh, single cam comedy, but it worked. And I don't know if she did three or four seasons of that, but like same thing, she jumped to the front of the line and like they're in control now of their own careers and what they create and who they talk to. And it's like, we're, we've all, as, as creators, as actors, we've been there where it's like, you have to do a commercial for something you don't believe in just because either you want the work, you need the money, you know, whatever we've taken roles where we're like, man, this doesn't feed my soul. Or it's like, I went to drama school or I, I've spent all this money investing in my 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 uh, craft to sit here and go, the iPhone 10, call somebody. Like, you know, whatever it is, like, we're like, this isn't fulfilling as a creator, but we won't pick up a pen and do it ourselves. And that's what this whole conversation was about was like, why not like get in the driver's seat? Like you can't, if we're going to complain about stuff, like you, you can either complain about it or you can do something about it. And so people are, well, Brent, I'm not a writer. I'm not a director. Okay. <laughs> Neither like I'm, was, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not David Mamet. David Mamet wasn't David Mamet until he wrote so much that he became David Mamet. But the whole point is I'm not telling you to go out and, um, uh, like I don't, I'm not expecting it to be the best thing. And that's why I use the Issa Rae is because she didn't wait to go, well, I don't have you like, I don't have the best DP. I don't have the best editor. I don't have the best sound person. So until I get that, I'm not going to do anything. She said, I got something to say. I'm going to do the best I can with what I got. But what I'm going to make clear is my voice. Right. And, and if you go back and watch her web series, which you should, you can, you can clearly hear her voice that sounds almost exactly like insecure right i mean it's insecure is better because there's she's had she had more resources and time and to 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 really work the script and build characters and things like that and guidance you know she had mentors and things like that but it, at the core of it, you can hear it's like oh that's insecure right so uh, so talking to this actor yesterday is like well you know, I really feel like I'm a, 
I'm a, I'm a goofy guy, but my body, I'm just like, he's, he's pretty built. Um, cause he works out, takes care of himself, but he's like, you know, I don't, I tried being the goofy, you know, but people were like, no, like a nerdy guy wouldn't be that jacked and everything. And I'm just like, the industry doesn't know what, what it's talking about. Like it, until somebody comes along and does it, they're, they're going to, they're going to play it safe in their area for whatever reasons. But it's like, why don't you find that character and show them what that character looks like? Does it like, it can't just be the jacked guy and the nerdy tech guy who, you know, is scrawny and everything else. You, your character's in there. Your guy's in there someplace because you exist because it's in you. You just have to find it. So I, so I said, hey, look, every day, make a commitment to picking up a script, whether it's something you write or maybe it's just an old audition that you have. Pick it up and, and approach it from that character. And if you do that every day, very soon, you're going to find that perfect hybrid of the muscular workout guy, fitness guy, and the nerdy guy. And it's going to just click because it's going to click in, in alignment with who you truly are. And it's going to be so effortless. And no matter what role you approach, it's going to work. And people are like, that's, it shouldn't work, but it works like, because it's your authenticity. But sitting there and going, well, I'm going to wait for the industry to figure it out. I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's worse than playing the lotto. You know, at least the lottery, you have a select, there's only so many numbers you can choose from and so many um, mixtures of those numbers. But with our, with our industry, um, it's a, it's a, a, it's a moving target that is moving on multiple axes all at one time trying to hit a bullseye. And I'm not saying it can't be done. It clearly can be done. A lot of people have done it, but it's like, if you really enjoy working, if you enjoy creating, why aren't you creating? Oh, because there's so much work that goes into it. And I said, it's like, if I told you, if you just, if you just film something, even like a two minute, three minute thing every day for the next year and put it on social media, if you put it on Facebook, if you put it on YouTube, um, if you put if you did that every day for one year, I guarantee you at the end of the year, you'll have your own series and it won't just be like a series that they book you on. It'll be the series that uh, any series that you want to create a development deal or something like that. Would you do it? And if the answer is yes, then you should be doing it because that right there is what got a Issa Rae and a Frankie. I can't think of her name is driving me nuts, but all these people that from the back of the line to the to the front line overnight they didn't work this i'm gonna do, i'm gonna i'm gonna because you're just part of the noise like uh, arnold schwarzenegger talks about in his book and he said you know he learned he learned at some point that if you want to stand out from the crowd when the crowd turns right you just keep walking straight and by osmosis you're gonna be you're gonna stick out And like people told him, listen to his story. People told him the same thing. Oh, you're the muscular guy. You're the, you can't do that. You can't do that. He's like, what? Like, pff, who are you to tell me I can't? So he went out and started doing it. You know, the, the rock is another person, you know, he is the, the highest paid actor in Hollywood. And, it's, and, you know, I say that, but it's like, like that doesn't really matter, but it does like, it's a gauge of, it's a proof that like, he played the game and if you listen to his story he played like i read an article about him a few years ago and he talked about it where he's like you know he did you know he was playing these roles that his team was telling him to play and it was but he never felt in alignment or authentic with it and it wasn't going where he wanted to and then i think it was get short get not get shorty um the 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 sequel to that that he did and he was just like this isn't it's not working and so he was bold enough to fire his entire team and and then go around and say the the industry and go this is what i want to do and he found the team and he built the team around him 
that were that were willing to figure out how to make that happen. And then within a short period of time, he went from just being somebody who was known, oh, that's The Rock, to Dwayne Johnson, the biggest movie star in the world. Kevin Hart, same thing. Like he he did it through stand up. And through the stand-up, he could say what he wanted to say, how he wanted to say it. And then the and he just kept building the audience to then where he went from. If you watch his career, you can see him. He's in quite he's actually in quite a couple movies in the background or a few speaking roles. But one is like Along Came Polly. He plays the sound guy for um Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um in um 40 Year Old Virgin, he comes into the store and has an argument with Romero, the other um uh another one of the uh char- main characters but he was just like he was just another like he like you go back now and go oh shit that's kevin hart but at the time you weren't going that guy's brilliant like he he had to break through the noise by stepping over here doing his own thing for that for the, them to go oh look at this guy over here but that came from him having to put in the work of creating his own his own opportunities so it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be the best writer. You don't have to be the best director. Like it doesn't have to be the best, but just getting your voice out there, just saying, you know, showing people what you can do. And like the technology these days is so crazy that it does like, even in a low light situation, it does, it, it makes it like this camera here. It's not the best. Like this is a 2015 laptop and it still looks pretty damn good and it's like i didn't even the, the lighting's not even that great but through this i can i can share this information with you that's good enough to get my point across doesn't have to be a massive production right it's story character what what do you like what do you have to say comes first then the audio Right, because like nobody will watch something that looks brilliant but sounds like crap. Our brain just turns off. Story, audio, and then production, the video production of it, lighting, the camera, and all that other stuff. I mean, how many times have we seen like something that looks beautiful but the story's terrible, and we're just like, ah, it looks good, but I can't watch this. Right? I'll tell you. I shot my web series and I know I talk about this a lot, but it's like, it proves my point. I shot a web series um, on an iPhone seven. This phone right here is iPhone 10. I shot it on an iPhone seven, which is smaller than this. The, you know, the quality of the camera and chip and everything. And it was much lower, but I shot it on an iPhone seven. I wrote, I wrote it. I wrote nine episodes in six days. They were short episodes. They were between four and eight pages, which is four to eight minutes. Um, it had 40, no, I'm sorry. And it had a lot of characters, but they were like a lot, of, a lot of the characters were just, they come in, come out, just a couple lines here and there. But uh, I got 42 actors, 42 fellow actors who I always want to work with to come in and do these multiple characters and things like that. We shot it over 14 days, spread out over a month. We didn't shoot more than four or five hours a day, I think it was. We just stole every location. And uh, I did it for less than $400. Because again, having people come in for a couple hours, I'm not asking for their full day or anything else. I didn't have to feed them. They, I didn't have to pay them because they were just, they were like, yeah, I'd love to come in and work. And if it's just for a couple hours, I can, it's, that's no sweat. So I'm like, cool, come in for a couple hours and then spend, you know, you got the rest of your day. So, you know, um, anyway, so I did that and, uh, and put it together and that ended up going up for two Emmys and that opened more doors for me than any of the work I've done pound the pavement for eight years prior. The production quality, like I could have got a high-end camera and crew and all this other stuff, but it was the idea. And so many people responded to it. And so many people were like, this is great, but it's just something I had, I wanted to say. And so I said it. And yeah, I, I, I was, 
I, I was, I got creative with the camera work and things like that because I've been making f- films and projects for 10 years. And like, I was able to take more technical risks because I knew how to do it. But even still, like it was very simplified and, and, and bare bones, like everything. Like we had a phone and a gimbal that kept it level so we could move it around and it would keep it level. And we had a H2N um, audio recorder with XLR cable to a boom pole with a microphone on it. So, um, and people would literally like, if I was in front of the, if I was in front of the camera, somebody else was running the camera, somebody else was doing sound. And then if we jump to another scene where the, the camera person, the audio person were in the scene, I would get behind the camera. I'd get another actor to do sound and we just keep rotating around and we got it done. And it was a lot of fun. It doesn't have to be even that complex. It could be something very simple. I mean, what do you have to say? What, not only what do you have to say, what are your talents? Figure out like how to showcase your talents. If you can do like the quarter thing or riding a horse, you know, who knows? So, like there's, there's, there's so many, there's so many opportunities out there that are looking for individual skill sets, but they don't know they exist. Again, it's the cure for cancer. I got the cure for cancer, but nobody knows about it because, well, I'll wait for them to call me. How am I supposed to know? And not only that, you get, you get to control, like, if you're paying for class, acting classes, which, you know, it, you, you should. I mean, like, I, I enjoy acting classes. Um, I enjoy collaborating, but if you're not able to right now because of restrictions, if you're not able to right now because of financial, like what bet? Like you don't have to pay money to practice your craft. You just you just have to take the extra step and set up the camera and a light and some you know audio and come up with an idea and shoot it. You know, the, the, the um, Duplass brothers, if you listen to how they got started, like they got their break, they wanted to submit something to Sundance. And they, if I remember correctly, like one of them, they said they woke up in the morning, like, all right, we're going to shoot something today, you know, to submit to Sundance, I think because the deadline was coming up or whatever, but they didn't know what to shoot. So one of them had to go to work, I believe. This could be complete bullshit that I'm making up, but I think this is how it went down. One of them went to work, and the other one didn't have to work that day or something. And then when he came home, because I think they lived together, he said, okay, I got it figured out. You are, you're basically, you're going to try to make the best, um, uh, uh, They had an answering machine and he's like, he said, the whole point of this character is to try to make the perfect um, voice machine message. Like, so when, so when the voice machine picks up, voice recorder picks up, he says, hi, you've reached the Duplass brothers. Please leave a message after the tone. So like, he's like, the whole goal is that, but it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And so he just set up the camera and then his brother just started in like he'd start playing around and improv and he ends up cutting it together. And if you watch it again, the production quality is not that great, but the idea was funny and they submitted to Sundance and it, and people loved it. And it's launched, it started their career, start opening doors and opportunities for them to start making movies and, and be in the driver's seat of their own careers. And now they create projects. They create projects for themselves. They create projects for, you know, other people, to, to star in and things like that. But they also, it's open up opportunities for them to just act in other people's projects as well. But it literally came down from them just setting up a camera and going, okay, we got an answering machine. We got a bottle of wine. Um, so like, let's just see what we can do with this. And the camera doesn't move. It doesn't like, it doesn't go outside. There's not really, there's not really this, 
there's no other characters. It's just him and this voice machine trying to record the perfect voicemail message. It could be that simple. Like your the opportunity to launch you to to the next level is within your grasp just by you stepping in the driver's seat. When you rely on other people to feed you, you you're powerless, man. And that's where the frustration and people get jaded by this industry and they're like, so this place sucks and everything else. And it's just like, but you're leaving your destiny up to other people. And you're gambling with your, with your career and your, your dream, hoping that other people are going to see your value or your talent or your ability or, you know, I just wish somebody would take a chance on me, but you won't even take a chance on you if you're not willing to get up and, and turn on that camera and, and put yourself out there. Well, I'll do it when some, you know, when somebody gives me the opportunity, give yourself the opportunity. Work begets work, man. You create opportunity, it creates another opportunity. I get a lot of, I get a lot of my work just from people from that I've worked with in the past who have said, Hey, you know, call up Brent or um, people who've seen work that I've done and put out there. Hey, I saw, I saw a short film you did. I'm like, what short film? They're like this. I was like, Oh, I didn't even know that was out there yet. So yeah, you know, like to have you read for this or we want to offer you this role. Cool. Skip the line. It's like I told buddy last night, I was like, go to Six Flags and get, get the fast pass, man. Like just cut the line. And what's funny is everybody, you know, like people think that it takes all this effort and believe me, it takes effort. Like it's not, it's not like effortless. You know, you, if, if you want to build muscle, you got to go to the gym and pick up the weights. But, you know, if you're doing it on your terms, man, it can be enjoyable and you're doing it with the people you want to do it with. It's fun. You know, even for myself, I've said, oh, God, I love acting so much, but I don't get to do it at all. It's like, if I loved acting so much, why am I not doing it every day? And then I come up with a, a list of excuses why I'm not doing it every day. And I'm like, that's bullshit. If I loved it, nothing would stop me. So I'm saying all this not to just my you, but my again, myself, because I've been in those places where I'm just like, you know, moping around and going, God, like the industry, like, eh. and I sit there and I have to hold myself accountable. I'm like, Brent, like, if you don't like it, do something about it. Create something. And that's when I get to work. Right now, I'm writing a web series, an action web series, which is like, I've never, never done it before. Like I've done these little scenes, but as big as this thing's going to be, it's going to challenge me, but I'm excited about it. But I've like one thing, one thing I'm consciously doing is I'm writing the role that I want to play. I'm like, I've always wanted to play this role. I've got to do an, I got to do an action film before, but I didn't, I, the character wasn't as playful and passive aggressive and, you know, didn't have my personality, my, that I, that I want to, and I haven't really got to use that in many characters. So I'm like, I want to do an action, you know, uh, character, with my type of personality. So I'm writing that to ensure that I get the job. Why, am, why, why, why wait for somebody else? You know, Olympia Dukakis, if you know who she is, and if you look her up, you do. But Olympia Dukakis, she, you know, she was an actor for years on stage and everything else, but she could not break in to the, um, the uh, you know, the commercial uh aspect and i don't mean commercials like on tv i mean like the industry part like where people know her and then she did a one woman show she sat down put pen to paper did a one woman show and i if i remember she won a tony for it but it launched her career like all of a sudden and i think she was like in her early 50s when it happened if i remember correctly but that all of a sudden and she never stopped working she became iconic she won an oscar you know, she was in Still Magnolias. She was in Moonstruck. 
she had a great career after. I mean, she had a great career before, but she didn't have the commercial success. And, you know, uh, I was just watching this documentary about John Leguizamo. Uh, John Leguizamo did a, a thing in um, a stand-up set at Rikers Island for the inmates. But he talked in his stand-up, he talks about, you know, him struggling. And he was, you know, he always got cast as the drug dealer or the drug addict or whatever in like these TV shows. And then finally, like through his frustration, he sat down and he put pen to paper. And then he came up with this one-man show that then became a hit on Broadway. And that's what launched his career. Um, let's see, what else? Um, who was I just thinking about? Uh, oh, Eugenio, I can't remember his last name right now, but he did like, um, he was just in this movie, The Valet, which is really funny. He's a Mexican actor and he's older. I mean, he's, I think he's in his fifties now. Um, but, you know, he, I was reading his story because, uh, he start he you know he came to LA for and tried breaking through for years and at some point ran out of money and patience I think it was and he went back to Mexico and got a job and like started you know living but while he was there he was he started writing a screenplay and uh, he he ended up getting it finished raising some money and he filmed it in Mexico and then you know he got distribution which became it was called uh, instructions not included which is a, it's actually a fun movie, but then that led to, uh, how to be a Latin lover. And then like, he has, like, he's everywhere right now, but it, again, he tried for years to break through and it wasn't until he put pen to paper and said, I got something to say, and I'm going to say it that then all of a sudden people are like, Oh, look at this guy over here. He was there the whole fucking time. He was there the whole time, but they couldn't see him because he was just, he was in with the herd. But once he put a little effort and go, I'm going to do, and here's this, this is my point. I got to wrap up here, but here, this is my point is that we go, oh, like if you're sitting there going, oh, it's so much work. I don't, don't want to do that work. Every other actor is doing. That. That's what the masses are doing. So if you were just to put, take one step and do a little bit of effort, you're already separated from the pack. You're already doing what the majority are. And you go, well, Brent, if you're, well, if you're saying that and then everybody else do, does it, then like we're creating. No, it's not because the herd is all we're all fighting like there's thousands of people fighting for one role. But if there's thousands of people all saying something that what they want to say, they're all creating their own a thousand different stories. And we're not competing with one another. And yet we're all in the driver's seat. It's like if, if there was only one car for a thousand people to share, we all have to fight for that car to, to get to an audition. Like it would be chaos. But thank God, all we all, all thousands of us have our own individual cars so we can get around town. And so we all have a car so we can go where we want, when we want. You have an imagination. You have something to say. I know each and every one of you is like always, there's like, man, I wish I could just play this role. Play it, like write it. It may not, don't put the pressure on yourself for it to be the best thing in the world. Just do it. Like, again, I was talking to this guy yesterday and he's like, well, I've always, I've done Christopher Walken and I've done Schwarzenegger impersonations my whole life. I'm like, dude, then do them. I did it. I'd, I'd do Christopher Walken impersonation just for fun. And then I had this idea. I was like, you know, because all these master classes is like, you know, everybody has, you know, master class, master classes. And I was like, what if Christopher Walken had a master class? So I shot that. I wrote and I shot this Christopher Walken master class uh, promo. And if you haven't seen it, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, check it out. But it was just, it was so much fun. And it's like, it was just fun because I got to do it. I got to fulfill it. It's so like, if you want to fly a plane, go fly a plane just for the experience of it, you know? So anyways, that's my rant for this week about creating your own opportunities. And oh, before I forget, so if you go, well, I don't know how to write or I don't know how to, you know, direct, like there's writers out there that are looking to write something and they're looking to hone their craft. 
So go on. I did this. I went on social media and started looking for comedy writers. And I said, and I found a couple comedy writers. I said, here's my idea. And they, for, I don't know, I didn't pay them that much. It didn't cost me that much, but I paid them, you know, a few bucks. And they wrote the idea. And I was like, great. Like, so I had two scripts written while I was doing something else and got the scripts done. Hire people if you need to. If you, if you really don't, but like no excuse, man, like don't allow the excuses to stop you from uh, doing, you know, fulfilling your dream, your passion, figure it out. I was just watching, rewatching this movie, uh, Napoleon Dynamite. And if you go back, it's on Netflix right now. If you go back and watch, it's so simple. Like there's nothing big happened. The biggest thing that happens is he helps us helps this kid Pedro, the new kid in school, um, become president. Other than that, it's like character driven. And, you know, they shot it in Utah. I think they raised $400,000 to shoot it, which if I remember correctly, I think they shot it on film. So that's why it costs so much. It wouldn't cost that much now. But they went up to Utah to shoot it and and like stayed in people's houses and stuff like that, because that's where they were from. So they like, you know, whatever, but that, that they ended up, it ended up winning a bunch of awards at Sun, uh, Sundance. And then it was bought in, by Fox, I think it was. But it ended up making like $34 million off a $400,000 film. Again, I made my web series for four hundred less than $400. So, and that was pretty much paying $250 for the gimbal. So, if you take that off, it cost me like $150 bucks to, to make this thing. It's just the desire to do it and get it done. So hope this helps. Hope this inspires you. Helps you. Hope it empowers you somehow, some way. But, uh, you know, love to hear feedback. So if anybody has any thoughts, questions, concerns, feel free to reach out at actorshole at gmail.com. Um, check us out at actorshole.com if you want to look at more of our content that we've created over the years uh, a whole productions a whole is with a w a whole productions.com you can see all our skits you can see all the the things i talked about today the web series struggling um the christopher walken master class you can see all that stuff there for maybe some inspiration check out Issa ray's uh web series uh check out frankie's i can't think it hurt it was Smilf was the show, so check her out. Look at her short film. Um, just look around and just see how simple these ideas were. And then, you know, put put something down. Don't expect the first one to be a hit or whatever. Maybe it maybe it is on a fluke, but just do it for the do it, just do it for the reps. You know, practice your craft. Like I said, if you're not in class right now, can't afford it or don't want to, like let that be your acting class. So I'm Brent Harvey. This has been Empower Your Self-Sustaining Actor Weekly Chat. And uh, thanks for checking us out. We'll be back next week with another topic in and around the craft, the industry, or inspiration, whatever it is, uh, in and around acting. So hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you later.